Hello and welcome to the Tank Club. We've been playing a lot of Wayfinder recently and we've finally put together this fantastic build. And this is a Wingrave build that is aimed at group support as a hybrid of all three roles, the tank, the healer and damage dealer. You'll be able to solo content, although at a slightly slower pace than a full DPS build. However, this build will allow you to heal yourself and group members. You'll be able to stack up and crowd control enemies deal a good amount of damage and AoE damage while also buffing survival and group DPS. Currently, there is no need for a full tank in Wayfinder because you cannot maintain 100% aggro on an enemy unless you are dealing the highest DPS. Healers are also scarce, so damage is king in Wayfinder. Keep this in mind when setting up your build. This is the closest thing you'll find to being an effective tank in the Wayfinder MMO. So first you're looking at Wingrave's stats. So for this build, your main focus will be on max health and weapon power. This will provide you with good survivability and allow you to deal significant damage. You want to aim for the following stats. So 3000 plus health. 3000 is the minimum amount of health that you want to have. A large health pool is the best survival tool for Wingrave. After 3000 health, you can start to worry more about your physical and magical defense but the first thing is to make sure you're hitting that 3k plus health. Next, you've got resilience and you wanna have kind of at least 2k resilience. This is the amount that your resilience bar has and it's the one located above your health bar and it's the amount of damage you can receive. If you've got a really low resilience bar, you're gonna become, your character will become broken and you'll be staggered, you'll be able to get knocked about, you'll be taking more damage. So you wanna have a good amount of resilience so you're able to take more damage before you reach those, those points. Next, we're looking at 5,000 or more weapon power, so you can get this a bit higher. It really depends on kind of the other things you're going to be using as part of your build. It's useful for increasing your damage output, and this is for your light attacks and your weapon ability that you're going to be using very, very often. And you're going to be also using your alternative attack, which is also a weapon ability. So a large portion of your damage is coming from weapon power. You've then got ability power, and having about 2,000 is a good amount to have. This boosts the damage and healing output of your actual abilities. Now, if you wanted to go as a full support and you're not really worried too much about damage, then you'll stack ability power as high as possible, and you will not worry as much about weapon power. For your break power, this is more for solo play. I've always got at least 1,000, but you can get it more. It really depends on, again, your accessories and things like that, but it's useful for those solo situations to break enemies faster so that you can do more damage and so the enemies can't do damage back to you. As we mentioned already, you want to stack up your health and your resilience, which is way more important than physical and magical defense. But once you've got a good amount of health and a good amount of resilience, you can apply some resistances. Somewhere in the 3000 region can be good, and that is the main thing. So if you want to be more tanky, put some effort into physical and magical resistance after the health and resilience. Otherwise, just keep boosting out weapon power to do more damage because the faster enemies die, the less you've got to worry about being killed yourself. These stats can be achieved by maxing your character, maxing out your weapon, applying your affinities and slotting good echoes. So Wingrave weapons. I personally really like the sword and shield. Obviously, you are able to use any weapon. The two-hander works really good. There's a lot of weapons that work well with Wingrave, but for this build, we are going to be using a sword and shield. Now, at the moment, there's kind of... Apart from the one that you start with, you've got Radiant Dawn. This is the tank-focused sword and shield. It's useful for harder content because it will improve your survival. It increases your block sustainability. So you're able to block for prolonged periods of time. You can just stand there and block for a very, very long time and take very little amounts of damage. So it can be really good for those scenarios. But otherwise, you won't focus necessarily on that because the boss won't always be targeted onto you. If you're not doing enough DPS, then bosses are going to run off. So that's what leads us to Grim Harvest. This is a more DPS focused option. So it's very strong for dealing damage within the hybrid build. It's ideal for melee range combat. It creates a massive amount of AOE damage and it's really, really good. It's actually a set that not so many people seem to be using, but it's one that I've been using and it works extremely well. The next one is Tooth and Claw, which is currently bugged. Not for everybody, but it is bugged for me. So I can't actually use it properly. But this is effective more against spread out enemies and it does have the best damage stats. So it can be very useful, but otherwise, as I've mentioned already, Grim Harvest is my preferred option. And future released one, Legacy. It is the ultimate support weapon. Provides your full group with a shield and weapon power buff. So this is one to look out for in the future. It's going to be very coming very soon. So Legacy, if you wanted to go down the tanky route, you wanted to offer more group support and you're not going to be doing as much damage yourself, 
Legacy is going to be an absolutely fantastic choice for a more tank and group focused build. So Grim Harvest is a really strong weapon when trying to utilize damage within your build to become a strong hybrid tank. It is my personal favorite. As a melee character, Wingrave will often be in close range of enemies and this weapon does AoE damage and it staggers enemies as well. The stats are not as damage focused as Tooth and Claw, but I'd argue that the Barn Gazer ability is superior to the Shredder Toss from Tooth and Claw and it also synergizes incredibly well with one of the Echoes that we're going to be using in a minute, which we'll discuss. So Grim Harvest is a great option for this build, and that is the one that you should go with. Okay, so for Wingrave's accessories, accessories come as part of a three-piece set, and you can opt either to use a three-piece set, or you can focus on individual stats gained from specific accessories. So you could focus on just getting multiple one accessories that give you max health, weapon power, those kinds of things. So anything that increases max health and weapon power is going to be incredibly useful for this build. And then that is your priority stats. Secondary stats that might in be included on accessories include resilience, break power, and physical or magical defense as well. So focus on the max health and weapon power, but anything that also includes the secondary base stats, those are good as well. One of my favorite sets to use, an actual three-piece set, would be the Beastmaster set. And for this, you will get it from the Beastmaster boss. So the Feather of War, the Fang of the Beast, and the Master's Horn. Now, the increases you're going to get here, you're going to get increased crit power, which is not great from the Feather of War, but you are going to get weapon power and max health. Fang of the Beast is going to give you weapon power, max health, and crit rating. Again, the crit rating isn't that great. And then you also get break power, weapon power, and max health from the Crafted Master's Horn. Now, when you use this set, it's going to give you an increase as well for using three pieces to your weapon power and max health, which is extremely good. Another really good option is the Flora Corruption set, which you'll get from various different sources. There's, there's more information about these on my website, and I'm also going to list a few different ones on my website for accessories you can use. So go and check that out. The link is in the description below. Next, we're on to Wingrave's Echoes, and you want to focus on getting the Echoes initially. So just get the Echoes to slot, and then eventually you're going to need to try and farm them in purple quality, along with upgrading them to the max by using any unwanted Echoes that you're no longer using. So for full support, prioritize obviously ability power echoes. That is if you're going for the full support route, as I mentioned earlier, ability power is more useful for absolute maximum full support, but you will do very, very low DPS this way. If you are going for the DPS hybrid, you're going to want to stack up weapon power. So for attack echoes, one of the better ones to use are the blood letter echoes. These are going to give you weapon power combined with break power. Very, very strong. On your guard echoes, the codex initiate echo, which stacks up max health, get those slotted in really really good as well on your balance echoes you want to use the hollow horror echo which gives attack power and resilience for cross echoes bone stomper echo for the max health and attack power as you can see we're really focusing in on the, the health the resilience and the attack power and these are super strong when you've got all these slotted and leveled up for your rush echo you've got a few different options but for this build mara's echo and the first echo as well are very very good so I personally love Mara's for expeditions. When you dodge, you leave a trap on the floor and it pulls enemies in and then explodes doing damage equal to 250% of your ability power. So this does more damage when you go for that full support and you do the AP stacking, but it will still be great as it does allow you to combo it with Grim Harvest. So you can roll dodge, all the enemies get sucked in, it does damage, Grim Harvest, you proc that, that will damage AoE as well, that will proc the stagger. So you're doing a lot of crowd control by combining these two things together, and it just works really, really nice, and the AoE damage is good as well. On boss hunts, it might not be as effective, so you could switch it to something like the Trickster Echo, which procs when you dodge roll, and that will help to keep aggro of enemies off your team, because the Trickster Echo can taunt four enemies. It also applies up to four potential debuffs, so that can be a good option as well if you're not really finding Mara's useful in those boss hunt scenarios. But there, are, but there is quite a long cooldown on these Echoes. The other Rush Echo that you should use is the first, which will buff your team when you do a double jump. It does have a long cooldown again, but if you try to time it with other buffs, when you use your Grim Harvest weapon ability and you give that damage boost to your group, you do a double jump that also procs the first. And you've got all these other things going. Maybe the enemy is also staggered, so then they are vulnerable and your group are able to do a lot of damage. It can be a really good DPS boost for your group. For more DPS, if you wanted to focus that for yourself, you can use the Commander Creed Echo for a weapon power build or 
the Argent Hand for an AP build. On to affinities. So it's really simple. You can only level up one affinity. So fully level up the purple focus affinity for increased damage and for reduced incoming damage. It's the most valuable tank related perk, which also increases your damage. So you can only focus one of these out. You then want to distribute five points into instinct and five points into discipline because there's no point putting 14 points into one of these. You cannot unlock an additional perk. You'll just be stacking points for nothing. So the best way to do it is to put the five points into each because that will then unlock increased healing. It will unlock increased guard break meter restoration. So this way you get four perks unlocked instead of three. With the additional four points, you can put them wherever you like. They don't. It doesn't really matter that much. It's a very minimal gain, if we're being honest. But I decided to put mine into Instinct. You could put them into Discipline, or you could split them 50-50. Next, we're looking at Wingrave's abilities. So you are limited to the abilities you are given, but you can make seven upgrades to those abilities. Focus on upgrading Righteous Strike to level 3 first, due to the fact it will be getting used around every 2-3 to three seconds. So the increased damage reduction, damage healing and resilience gain is absolutely perfect. Follow this by leveling up Radiant Pulse to level 3 as well to protect your group and to do additional healing and damage. You can choose to upgrade Judgment instead of Pulse if your group members don't stand behind your Radiant Shield and you don't need it for yourself. But just remember, you can cast Pulse twice for every one Judgment. So the effect of Judgment is going to be much weaker than the effect of Radiant Pulse because Radiant Pulse is there much more often. Put the remaining point into Divine Aegis, the character ultimate. This will increase its duration by 50%, which can be really helpful. If you use level 3 pulse, then the leftover point could also just go into Judgment to make enemies receive additional break damage. So if you didn't want to put that one point into Divine Aegis, then put it into Judgment. The reason I also don't stack points into Divine Aegis is because this is even, much, even slower at regenerating. You might only use this once per fight, so there isn't a lot of use in stacking three points and losing out on all the other perks and benefits to get a stronger ultimate when you can only use that ultimate maybe once per fight. So that's how I kind of look at it. Don't forget as well that Judgment is a taunt ability. So it will draw aggro as an area of an effect from nearby enemies. So it doesn't mention this on the actual skill itself, but it will taunt everything. The only problem is, is the taunt isn't very strong. So it won't last for a very long time. So enemies will not stay on you for very long. You will lose aggro before the like before the taunt skill comes back around, before it refreshes, and also there are many things that can steal taunt away from you. So Wingrave's Master is, you want to go for level 3 Grounded Counter. It's a good choice for the group benefits, especially with the Radiant Dawn weapon, so if you decided to go with Radiant Dawn as your weapon, definitely go with Grounded Counter. If you wanted to just be able to Palmer Block, then you could stack Bulwark with Radiant Dawn, and you'll have a ridiculous amount of stamina sustained, so you'll be able to block pretty much an entire fight. Now you should consider switching to level 3 Bulwark if you encounter sustain problems when you're using something like Grim Harvest or Tooth and Claw because that will allow you to have better block sustain and it can be quite tricky when you're using those weapons the amount of stamina damage that you receive is more than with the Radiant Dawn weapon. Just a quick look at things like artifacts and consumables so you can use artifacts in the game currently you've got the Grand Deceiver artifact, the first artifact and the Storm Twins artifact you definitely want to try and get the first artifact because this will increase ability power for you and your group. Very, very good. And it's a group buff and you don't have to do anything. As long as you have the artifact and put it into your house, this is the permanent buff you're giving to people that are stood near you. Obviously things like increased gold drops from the Grand Deceiver artifact and additional healing from flasks on the Storm Twins artifact are very useful, but they're not as essential for kind of group content as the first one. Potions as well. You can slot two extra potions if you've progressed far enough in the main story quest. These potions can boost various stats, so craft potions that increase max health, resilience or weapon power and make sure you use them when you're going through really hard fights to give you those little bit of extra boosts. And finally we're on to how to play this Wingrave build. So the basic rotation for Wingrave consists of left click, which is your light attack, you press E for your alt attack and then you press 1 to activate your righteous strike and repeat, that is it. Righteous strike will always reset on cooldown after you do a light attack plus an alt attack. So when you do left click and E, righteous strike will always come back, meaning you can virtually spam that skill. You also want to use your two skill radiant pulse and your three skill judgment on cooldown and use your Q skill, your weapon ability every third rotation because that's how long it should take to come back. Every third rotation, a light attack, alt attack, righteous strike, you should have your weapon ability back and you'll use that 
for the AoE damage, the stagger, and it will also give that group DPS buff. You want to keep an eye on your echoes in the bottom left corner of the screen. You can kind of see them there. You'll know when they're available because it shows the little icon and proc them when needed. With the echo setup we mentioned with Mara's and the first, you need to dodge every 30 seconds to proc Mara's and you need to double jump every 45 seconds to proc the first echo. Although it is wise to try and time the proc of the first with other damage buffs when a boss is vulnerable to maximize group DPS. It's also useful to use Mara's for ad pulls, so try and use it straight away when you get into an ad pull to stack the enemies in. Obviously on a boss fight, you just use it on cooldown, and that is the best way to do that. For boss fights, use your ultimate wisely. Save it for moments where group members need to be picked up, or when a big mechanic is happening, usually near the end of a battle. Sometimes there'll be like a big mechanic right near the end, during the execute phase, it can cause people to die, it can cause a group to all die, you throw it down and you protect your group so you can just burn the boss and kill it. Also remember that Judgment is an AoE taunt ability, but the taunt from this is not great. You'll initially gain aggro of nearby enemies, but things such as Celo's Proto-Clone ability instantly steals taunt from you. Judgment has a really long cooldown, so you'll find it impossible to maintain aggro of enemies unless you're also outputting the most DPS in your group. And that is everything for this Wingrave build, the Sentinel. If you want to see a written version of this build, you can check it out over on the Tank Club website. The link is in the description below. Thank you very much for all of our YouTube members and Patreon subscribers for your fantastic support. It's very much appreciated. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Wayfinder content. As tanking becomes more prominent in this game as well, we'll have a lot more tank information and more tank builds. So keep an eye on us for that and our website as well, thetankclub.com. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.